Well, when it comes to uh, the trends that we're seeing in the poorest continent globally, we're seeing that it will be home to 738 million handsets or nearly three mobile handsets for every four people on the continent by the end of next year. This is a market that's certainly seeing steady and upward momentum here. Are we running the risk of hitting saturation point? Well, first, thanks for having me. And, and with regards to the growth story in Africa, I, I really believe that it's a growth story that we will um, have for some time to come. I, I don't believe that we have run into the point uh, of saturation anytime soon. And, and, and I believe after voice, there's significant uh, room for growth in uh, mobile broadband services and the type of value added services that ride on top of those uh, services such as mobile health, yeah. Uh, mobile financial services, um, M Women, M Education. Th th there's a lot to do in the mobile space beyond voice. Obviously, voice is an important component. There's been over $54 billion invested in voice networks between 2000 and 2008. Uh, but I really am very optimistic about well, the prospects well, we'll for Africa Well, we'll be taking a look at that mobile. expanding portfolio a short while from now. But let's look at the rate of subscriber growth because that's what investors are really keen on. Uh, what, what kind of penetration levels and then opportunity are we looking at? Well, we currently, as of the fourth quarter of 2011, have reached a penetration rate of 65%. Now, it's important to bear in mind that at the end of 2010, we had just crossed a 50% mobile penetration. So in the course of one year, from the fourth quarter of 2010 to the fourth quarter of 2011, mobile penetration has increased by 15 percentage points. Now, to put this in economic terms, the World Bank has done a study that shows that for every 10% increase in mobile penetration, there is a corresponding 0.8% increase in GDP. Now, that's for 10% mobile penetration increase. We've increased 15% the mobile penetration. So that's equivalent to a 1.2% increase in GDP year over year from the fourth quarter 2010 to now. That kind of stat should be providing enough incentive for governments to really get their acts together in terms of encouraging uh, mobile growth moving forward. Uh, we know that uh, GSMA has urged African governments to give more spectrum to uh, you know, mobile services. How are we comparing at this stage to our global counterparts? I would say spectrum is, is a potential wrinkle in what's otherwise a very positive story. And Africa as a whole has allocated significantly less spectrum, African countries that is, have allocated as a whole significantly less spectrum than their counterparts in emerging markets. Spectrum is the very fabric of mobile communications. And if we're talking about delivering mobile broadband services in the future, we need substantially more spectrum available to the mobile industry to deliver those services. In particular, the digital dividend band is a very, uh, is of great importance to the, to, to the mobile industry, currently being used by UHF television broadcasters, but there is a plan for them to move from analog to digital, freeing up this additional spectrum, and I think that's going to give a lot of coverage yeah. to currently unconnected people being uh, delivering mobile broadband services and voice services to, uh, well, right now we have 36%, 35% of, uh, of Africans who are unconnected. And the only way we're going to reach th that additional 35% is through making more spectrum available. So you've put that appeal through to African governments. What kind of response, uh, what kind of response have you received? Well, the intentions are good. The execution is sometimes uh, uh, lacking. And, and, and you know, this comes down to administrative issues and delays and auctions and these kind of things. What we would encourage African governments to do is, is to really set aside very clear roadmaps on spectrum policy and, 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 and institute a timeline and publicly commit to maintaining that timeline of when they plan to clear spectrum, allocate to mobile, and issue the licenses. And I think this would give great visibility to investors, to the industry, to make the necessary investments in order to deploy those networks to acquire that spectrum. You highlighted earlier the kind of platform this sets for various sectors within any economy, and that ranges from health to finance, uh, you know, moving forward. What impact do you see mobile expansion having on the continent economically, but socially as well? Okay, well, we have a forecast in our, in our uh, Africa Mobile Observatory that by going from 65% mobile penetration to 100% mobile penetration, 
this would actually release an additional $35 billion in GDP across Africa, which is equivalent to a 2% increase in GDP. Now, we've reached 65% from 50% in the course of one year. I think there is, there is optimism um, in, um, among those in the industry that, that we can reach the 100% penetration mark sooner rather than later. And I think this would, this would enable a lot of uh, increases in, in, in productivity, increases in business activity. Um, the mobile industry accounts for 5.4 million jobs in Africa. This is only set to increase, and I think we're going to see a lot of economic activity um, riding on the back of the mobile industry over the coming years. A lot, of, uh, a lot of that reliance on data and the kind of progress we see on that front, uh, Peter. I mean, we've got voice at this stage, yes, as you said, dominating the industry, but uh, the growth curve uh, moving forward, we've heard time and time again, is going to be uh, influenced by the kind of data growth we see uh, moving forward. Let's, let's talk about that dynamic and uh, just how quickly you see voice handing over that baton. I think there's substantial room for, uh, for, 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 for GSM technology for some of the voice uh, services and, and, and I, I really see data as complementing uh, voice connectivity. What we're seeing now is six uh, deployments of what's called HSPA Plus, which is, which is essentially the, uh, the most robust, the fastest uh, mobile broadband technology in wide use today. After HSPA Plus, we have uh, migration to LTE, which is the next step. And you know, the, these, these networks are up and running. There, there, there is substantial demand for these services. But I don't think it's about necessarily replacing voice. Yeah. I think that we'll just be able to offer additional services to subscribers, uh, subscri ser services that they need and connectivity that they need to, to do the things in their life, like, uh, uh, for example, be able to communicate with a doctor and have a doctor interact yeah. with them via telemedicine or, well, or, or be able to, to, to remit money to their mother in, 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 in the rural area. I think these, um, I think the next generation technologies are, are just going to complement what, what already exists. Well, Peter, for consumers on the poorest continent, that cost imperative is crucial. I mean, uh, you know, in terms of gaining access to all that you're talking about and the possibilities that uh, mobile opens up. Uh, what's your assessment of the cost scenario? Okay, well, cost is really a function of economies of scale. And what we see over the past few years is there has been, an, there's been enormous progress in terms of low-cost handsets because the GSM technology has enabled a mass standardization and mass production of handsets in a way that makes them affordable to, to, to the lower end users. And, and I think allocating harmonized spectrum according to internationally recognized bands will also make it easier for the chipset manufacturers to produce the chips that go into the phones at a cheaper cost, enabling them to produce more phones, capturing the economies of scale, this will ultimately drive down the prices of the handsets. And I think in terms of the usage, competition is always helpful. Uh, and I think there's, there's robust competition across yeah. Africa to really drive down usage prices and, and, and the handset prices will, will benefit from economies of scale. One issue I would mention, though, is, is the issue of taxation. And in and, and some countries in Africa, there has been very targeted mobile-specific taxation that has been levied. And this has had the effect of, of really distorting, I think, some of the uh, consumption of, of mobile services. I would highlight a positive case, and, and that is Kenya, where in 2009 they reduced their value-added tax on handsets, which was a 16% tax. They, they actually removed it. Between 2009 and 2011, they went from 50% mobile penetration to 70% mobile penetration. They had a 200% increase in handset purchases, a 70% decrease in average handset prices, and 113% increase in usage. Now, most importantly, is by taking a, a longer term view, the Kenyan government was actually able, between 2009 and 2011, to increase their net tax receipts from the mobile industry by 30%. So, so taking a longer term view on the issue of taxation and not really distorting the market for short term uh, budgetary gains. Absolutely. I think is going to be critical to, to, to really incentivizing and fostering growth in the mobile industry.